Big steps for Dan Mullen in year one, another prominent step in year two, but that next step might be the key one here in 2020. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the Gators. And the best way to break down the Gators is with Gators Breakdown. David Waters comes on in to talk Florida football. David, how you doing? I'm good, Mark. I'm good. Um, man, college football preseason magazines are out. So, uh, you know, just deep dive into those kind of the, uh, for me, you know, a lot of people say media days are kind of the kickoff for football season. It usually starts me with these, uh, a lot of these preseason magazines. Oh, of course. Now we can go online at any point in the year, yeah. but it's still great to just get that preview yeah. magazine in your hand. It takes you back years. And with all the craziness going on with the COVID situation this year, it was also good to hear, um, the the NCAA Council mapping out a format in regards to when there's going to be full conditioning, full workouts monitored by the coaching staffs going right into regular fall camp, and things look to be in a good place. Look to be, look to be. July 24th looks like the date that they'll kind of start walkthroughs and all that good stuff, so they'll have a football in their hands. It looks like around July 24th. Then a couple weeks later, they'll get into uh, fall camp. Uh, Gators will start fall camp August 7th, like a lot of schools will, who open up that Labor Day weekend. Uh, if that week zero stuff, everybody gets that you know, the week before. Uh, but most programs will be uh, in that fall camp window starting on August 7th. Now, a year ago at this time, Kyle Trask was looking to be a backup quarterback for like the 15th year in a row, it, it, it seems <laughs> probably for him going back to his freshman year in high school. But here we are a week, a year later, and people are talking him generally up as the best quarterback in the SEC. Yeah, you know, uh, admittedly, a lot of that has to do with, you know, Jake Fromm, who, I mean, besides the game in Jacksonville, we played better than Jake Fromm last year uh, for, 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 for the, the way the season went. Uh, Tua Tagovailoa, Joe Burrow, of course, are, are, are gone. So that plays into it a bit, too. But, you know, Kyle Trask was only really behind those guys uh, last year. but with, So played well in that game in Baton Rouge. Could have played better versus Georgia, but uh, you know came into that Kentucky game after Felipe Franks went down and led the Gators to a come, come from behind victory. And you know Dan Mullen says it, and it's not necessarily just lip service here. Uh, he prepared like he was a starter. If he didn't prepare like he was a starter, there was no way Florida was going to come back versus Kentucky. And then for him to go on and, and beat Auburn and, and you know have a shootout with Joe Burrow and Baton Rouge and go on to have a, a pretty good season uh, when it was all said and done. So now – how can he build on that, Mark? That's the big question. What will a year of experience for Kyle Trask do? He already proved he could be a really good quarterback. Can he take a next step? And look, look we're not expecting some Joe Burrow type leap here. That's that was unprecedented. That was going to hardly ever be seen. Maybe once every 10, 15 years, you'll get a quarterback that that does something like that. And look, Kyle Trask may not have to. You know, this Florida run game we're gonna is gonna have to get better. He'll he'll probably have more help there. Florida recently got some good news there with Lorenzo Lingard being eligible, the five-star transfer from Miami. Stuart Reese comes over from Mississippi State, grad transfer that Dan Mullen and John Hevesy recruited. Uh, you'll get to plug him in on the offensive line as well. So the thing that can help Kyle Trask the most is for him not to have to do it all, for not the whole game not to have to be on his shoulders for this Florida run game to help him. Look, he, he may not have as many passing yards as he did last year. He may not have to. And I think that's the point I, I'm trying to make here is he may have more explosive plays because if that run game gets going and you can hit more play action shots down the field and hit bigger plays, not necessarily as many plays, but bigger plays, I think you know that does something for Kyle Trask in, in this offense. So I'm looking for him to take the next step in, in just being in – control of the offense a bit more and having more help around him. Really good quarterbacks are not as scarce as they used to be. They just develop too many of them at the high school level. They're yeah. used to throwing the ball constantly. They're used to the spread attack. They they are refined coming in to the collegiate ranks. So every good program's got at least, you know, there there's a quarterback battle or a situation in which the next two guys are pretty good too. And so it's not just okay, we we're lucky to have one. And of course that brings into play Emory Jones. So do you think they're in a position where they're going to continue to be really good with the balance that they they give Emory Jones in the offense and the plays that they give him, or is there going to be any kind of an issue there? No, I don't think it'll be any issue. I, I think both players pretty much know um, the plan going in. Um, and look, I, and I was recently listening to uh, Dan Mullen, Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow on uh, CBS Sports last week, and they asked – Mullen, Tebow, and Meyer about the rotation back in 2006 uh, of Tim Tebow and Chris Leak. And Tebow said at best, he was like, look, we knew the game plan going in. 
Uh, there was no surprises. Everybody knew what was going to happen, and I'm sure that's the same way with Kyle Trask and Emory Jones. They know the plan uh, there, you know, and, and I'm sure Emory Jones wants to play more. Of course, we all thought by year three and Dan Mullen, he was going to be the quarterback. We didn't think Dan, <laughs> we didn't think uh, Kyle Trask would be the, the quarterback for the Gators in Dan Mullen's third season uh, there, so somewhat of a surprise, but you know, I look for Emory Jones to, to play to play a bit more. I know Gator fans want to see him pass the ball a bit more. It got a little predictable uh, at time when he would come in and, and you know, Take a handoff and or not take a handoff, you know, take a direct snap and 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 try and make something happen in the in the run game to get to help the run game get the run game going. But we, we Florida fans want to see him pass the ball more. He's got a good arm. I mean, he showed it in spurts last year, especially go back to the Auburn game when Kyle Trask went down with an injury and Emory Jones led Florida to a field goal in, in a really close game right before halftime. So he's got the talent, and you know, Florida fans are eager to see it. They're eager to see that true dual threat quarterback that we know Dan Mullen has the best success with doesn't necessarily mean he's the best quarterback right now. Will he eventually end up being better than Kyle Trask? Probably so. Maybe uh, in a different style of offense. He's not going to, you're not going to put Emory Jones out there and run the same offense that Florida ran last year with Kyle Trask. It's not going to be the same offense. It's not going to be an air raid and throw the ball 65% of the time. It's going to be more of what we know Dan Mullen offense to be. So it's going to be two style of different offenses when, when Emory Jones takes over or when he's in the game uh, there. So, you know, it's uh, – I think we'll see a better rotation. I think they'll get a feel for it uh, coming up to, to this summer when they start getting into more of the, the walkthroughs and all that stuff. But, Mark, we'll, we'll see both, and uh, I think it'll be a pretty successful rotation for the Gators. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we all love each and every day. Roster breakdowns, I keep it locked in right here. And, of course, for your Florida football fix, Gators breakdown with David Waters. David, you mentioned uh, Stuart Reese. Uh, it's it's uh, certainly a bonus when you can bring in a guy with 34 starts in the SEC coming in from Mississippi State. you got a, an experienced center. Uh, will the offensive line allow you – allow Dan Mullen to call what he wants, or is it going to be as pass heavy as it was, as you well know, the numbers last year was like 300 yards per game through the air, 130 on the ground versus a, a perfect 50-50 split the year before. Like I said, Mark, you, you hope that run game can help and you, you hope it helps the pass game a little bit. I, I don't think you want, I don't think Dan Mullen, he, he knows he can do it that way. I still think he wants to run the ball a little bit more and a little bit with, with a little bit more success. And you go back to late last season and there were signs in the FSU game and in the orange bowl versus Virginia, where you saw once Richard garage and Ethan white started getting really young wide receivers, one uh, offensive lineman, one was in his uh, red shirt year, uh, Richard garage and Ethan white was in his trench was in his uh, true freshman season. Once they got inserted, uh, the offensive line did play uh, a little bit better. Uh, and you saw in the Virginia Bowl game, that was one of their best running performances of the year. But, you know, Michael Pirine was part of that. He's now going on to the NFL uh, there. So can Florida find something in Damian Pierce, Malik Davis, Lorenzo Lingard, a couple of other young backs as well. But it really is going to start up front. It was the offensive line that held that run game back so much last year. So Brett Heggie uh, played left guard a good bit the last couple of years, would now slide to center. Um, Stone Forsyth, I still think will be a left tackle. Richard Garage there at right tackle, and I think you put Stuart Reese there uh, at right tackle or right guard, and then you'll have uh, Ethan White there at left guard. I think that's Florida's five best offensive linemen right now. Get those five best on the field in some kind of combination. There's a question if Reese will play tackle or guard. He played tackle um, last year uh, with um, – Oh, wow. What was the coach's name at Mississippi State? Uh, Joe Moorhead um, played there at right tackle a bit. But when he was at when he was there with Dan Mullen and John Hevesy before they, they recruited him at Mississippi State, he played right guard. Uh, so I, I think he'll slide back at guard. I think that's his probably more natural position for going on to the NFL uh, as well, if that's going to be his next step. So. Florida's offensive line got better, Mark. That's just how much of a question did they get better? That's that, that's still the question of, of how much did they get better. So, David, between Trask and Mullen, they'd probably feel pretty comfortable staying with that 300 to 130 run pass ratio yardage uh, with, with the same wide receiver core, but they don't have most yeah. of those guys back. So how does this set up, or is it going to be a big free-for-all, a lot to figure out in August? No, they, they know the guys, Mark. They know Trevon Grimes, Jacob Copeland, Kadarius Tony are going to be the main three guys. And you still have Kyle Pitts, who is, you know, 50-50 wide receiver tight end uh, there. So 
they know the guys. They know the top four. There's no question about that. Those guys bring back a lot of stats as well. Uh, it, it, you know, Florida lost a lot at receiver, but they also bring a lot back at the same time. I know a lot of people say, the, and they want to compare it to Georgia and what Georgia did last year. Well, Georgia lost a lot, and they didn't have a lot coming back. And they, they were, they were, that's why there was such a drop-off at wide receiver for Georgia last year. They just didn't have a lot coming back. Florida still brings a lot back, still almost close to 50% of the production with the guys that return, especially you know, Kyle Pitts was right up there with Van Jefferson as far as catches and yards uh, there. So they, they, they still bring that part of their offense back. And everybody's looking at Trevon Grimes and Jacob Copeland to take that next step. Those are highly ranked, recruited guys. We saw, we've seen flashes the last couple of years, especially from Trevon Grimes, a bit from Jacob Copeland last year. So there's still a lot of confidence in the receivers that Florida brings back, that that, that top core receivers. Now behind them, there is some question. You know, can, can Trent Whittemore, Deontay Marks, and Jamarcus Weston, really, really young guys, can they break through and, and get some catches? And, we're, and Rick Wells is another receiver there. He's been there for quite some time, hasn't necessarily, um, you know, produced all too much there. And you got true freshmen coming in as well, led by Xavier Henderson and Jaquavion Frazier. So. Mark, it's just kind of two tiers right now. You have a lot of guys there who have a lot of experience, but then right behind them, you have a boatload of guys who have no experience whatsoever. So that's going to be the, the – what will Florida get out of those guys that are not Kadarius, Tony, Trevon Grimes, Jacob Klopp, and Kyle Pitts? What did they get out of that, that core receiver, you know, that core receivers, that, that bunch of receivers – that may speak to uh, what kind of offense we see this year. If those guys have a lot of stats as well, then Florida's throwing the ball a lot. If not, then I think Florida's happy with the the four guys that they got. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if those young guys don't perform because kind of like last year, Florida's got four guys they can really, really count on uh, there. So uh, it, it, starting with those top four, Florida can still feel really good about the wide receiver position. Pitts got 54, Grimes 33, and Copeland uh, 21 in 2019. We got David Waters on the line, Gators Breakdown. Join him on YouTube or your favorite audio platform. Again, it's Gators Breakdown. And, of course, subscribe right here for college football analysis every day.